Hey, 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 what is going on? This is Cody, and you are tuned in to B-Boy 45, broadcasting from the Seacrest Studios here at Children's Hospital Colorado. And I have such a treat for you guys today. Well, it's not me, really. It's Maya, and the latest news to keep you in the groove that has a treat. Maya, who's on the line with us today? Benj Pasek and Justin Paul. Benj and Justin, welcome. Hi, thanks for having us. How thanks are you guys? We are doing well. We're so excited to be uh, on with you today. Well, we are so excited to have you uh, and just hear all of the news that we need to know to be in the groove. So, Maya, take it away. <laughs> uh, so, first of all, I just want to say thank you both so much for calling in. I have been so excited to talk with you. Of course, we're so thrilled to. We're so thrilled to talk with you, Maya. Thank you for thinking of us. Thank you for having us. I know you have a lot of amazing people that you get to speak with. So we are very lucky that we get to be one of them and to get to speak to you and anyone else who's listening or watching right now. So hello to everybody and thank you for having us. Yeah. Um, so uh, my first question for you is, so I read that, um, you met in college and started collaborating pretty immediately. Um, how has your partnership evolved since college? Um, well, you know, we met, um, as you said, in college, and then, you know, we've been working together now for a long time. It's this year, actually, is going to be 20 years since we met in college. Uh -huh. So we've been working together for longer than not at this point in our lives. Maya, are you are you even 20 years old, Maya? Yes, I am. <laughs> Barely, probably. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it changes over time, you know, I think we met, um, we met as friends in college and then we've since become, um, you know, collaborators and business partners. And, uh, and, you know, I think, uh, those relationships change over time. Um, but it's pretty amazing to us that, that, you know, looking back after 20 years that we still, uh, get to make music together and, and make shows, plays and musicals and movies and TV shows. And, it's really cool to sort of look back at all the things that we've gotten to make together and realize that it all started, you know, as friends in, in college. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to say before I ask any more questions that I love all of your projects and listen to Aww. your music on repeat oh so, thank you thank you so much yeah um so you wrote dear evan hansen um based on an experience uh, that you bench had in high school were you surprised how the musical resonated with so many people? You know, Maya, that's a great question. I think for us, you know, when you when you talk about personal experiences, as I'm sure you have done on your your show, and when you interview people, sometimes you think that something that happens um, in your life is unique to just you. And sometimes you end up feeling like I'm the only person in the world who might be going through this thing, this painful or difficult thing. Um, and I think what was so amazing to realize is that through art, you can begin to tell a story that feels very personal, but when other people begin to relate to it and they see themselves in it, or they see glimpses of emotions that they feel or things that they thought were private thoughts or private emotions, then they feel because you were, um, you found the courage to share with other people, they feel a little bit more seen themselves and they feel a little bit less alone. And when you can talk about that experience that you think only I will understand this, or I'm the only person in the world that's going through this difficult thing, when you begin to, to say, hey, here's a piece of art, and then other people are like, oh, wow, I do relate to that too, you feel less alone too. And so it it, it is an amazing experience to see a piece that you get to work on, and you, you realize that an experience that you've had is actually shared by so many people. And that's a really, really great way to feel less alone, whether you're listening to the piece of art or music or whether you're creating it. Um, it it's a really amazing thing to watch community come together 
um, through, in our case, musical theater or a, a musical show. And that was the experience on Dear Evan Hansen, certainly. Oh, wow. Um, so what is your favorite song from Dear Evan Hansen? Oh, my goodness. That's a tough question. It's like, at, you know, sometimes we talk about this. It's like asking a parent to pick their favorite child. It's like yeah. we have to pick, there are no favorite children. We love all of them equally and in different ways. Um, but um, <laughs> I, think, I think there's probably a couple of songs that it means a lot to us that they've resonated with other people, kind of like what Benj was saying, where you write something, you think it's kind of your experience, but you realize everyone else, there's a community of people who have that same experience. So I think for us, um, on Dear Evan Hansen, the songs Waving Through a Window um, that the character Evan sings um, really seem to resonate with a lot of people, um, which you know, which told us that was a feeling that a lot of people experience, feeling on the outside of something, um, you know, feeling like they're not a part of something and wishing they could be in the community. Um, and so that's something that we've experienced in our own lives. And we found out that a lot of other people have experienced as well. So I think that song and also a song that's kind of the answer to that song, it's called You Will Be Found. Um, and that song, um, you know, uh, I think has you know, brought a lot of people together and a lot of people have felt, um, you know, very, I mean, forgive the obvious, but have felt really found, you know, they felt, they felt like the song or the musical really spoke to them and put a character on stage that was more like them or put characters on stage where they felt more seen. So I think probably the thing that means the most, the most to us is when something that we write resonates with other people like Benj was saying. So I think those two songs probably. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, that Dear Evan Hansen is one of my favorite musicals. Um, and I, when the movie came out, actually, uh, my family and I went to see it for uh, mine and my sister's 19th birthday. Whoa. And, uh, <laughs> so it was, and yeah, it was. It's so good and yeah we just loved it so I'm so glad that makes me so happy to hear it. thanks maya yeah um so uh where did uh your inspiration come from for uh the greatest showman that is another one of my um favorite soundtracks and uh, so I was wondering what your favorite song is from that project. Oh, gosh. Well, the inspiration, I'd say, is that we are so lucky to get to work with really, really great collaborators and partners, not just each other, but we sometimes get approached by directors or actors who want to make different projects. And so this was a project that was brought to us by a really wonderful director named Michael Gracie, who's a friend of ours, who was the director of the project. And he was working on it with Hugh Jackman, the movie star. And they were looking for people who would write songs for a musical project. And we were so excited to get the opportunity to try to be a part of it. And so we worked on writing songs with um, with each other for him and, and that he would listen to. Over the course of a couple of years, we worked on that. And we're super proud of how it all came out and how it went. And I don't know, there again, there's so many favorite songs that we have from that album. But um, one of them I'll say, which is one of my favorites, um, I'll say two, two of them that are my favorites. One is a song called uh, A Million Dreams, which is a song that is an ode to everyone out there who is told that maybe their dreams are silly and they're impossible. And it's really about believing in the power of what you can make in the world and what you can dream up and that what you can dream up is possible, which I really do believe. And another one is a song called This Is Me, which is a song that really um, says that even when the world tells you that who you are isn't something that they find um, to be, you know, good or that they approve of you. It doesn't really matter. You're, you're beautiful and you're incredible and exactly how you are born is an incredible thing to be. Um, and that song, um, has also resonated with a lot of people too. And we're really, really proud that, that folks have used that song as an anthem for themselves to, to find a, a sense of self-love, um, and, and get to share that with, with their friends and other people who need to hear that message. 
And I'll say one more quick thing, quick one, which is that for other like less kind of like important and um, like meaningful reasons. But another song that we also loved writing for that was a song called Rewrite the Stars, just because we got it to write it for Zendaya and Zac Efron. And that was pretty fun and pretty awesome to get to work with them. So yeah. we also <laughs> like that song. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I um. I love the whole soundtrack, but like the two songs that, and so I have the whole soundtrack on repeat, but uh, the two that I think I uh, like constantly come up are um, This Is Me and Rewrite the Stars, because I've added that like so many times <laughs> to my playlist. I just keep re-adding it because those so are it you. Maya, it was you. You were all those. When I look and see the listens, it was you. <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> How many streams? It was just my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. <laughs> um, so, do you have an all time favorite song that you've written? Oh, man. Whoa. I don't know if we have an all-time favorite. Um, I don't know. I mean, different songs have different meanings. You know, it's sort of like different ages. You know what I mean? If I were to say, like, what's your favorite age that you've ever been? There might be a really good year that you are proud of. But each one represents a different time in your life, and they're all part of your life. So I don't know. Like, there's songs from La La Land that we're really proud of. And there's songs from Evan Hansen that we're proud of. There's songs from Greatest Showman. And... You know, we've done some newer stuff too. There's songs that we're really proud of that, you know, and I think most of all, it's, you know, it's it's more the way that songs impact other people. So the fact that you just said that a song was meaningful to you, that's when we get the most excited. When we hear from people like you, that something is meaningful or goes onto your playlist or helped you through a, a difficult time or just brought you joy and made you want to dance yeah. and made you happy. That's the stuff that makes us the happiest. And you know what's interesting my, is like, yeah, there are sometimes there might be a song that for us, we sort of thought like, oh, okay, well, maybe we did an okay job with that song. Maybe it's not our favorite. We don't know. But then someone will write to us or talk to us and say, kind of to us, a really random song. You know what I mean? A song that might not be that significant or might seem like a smaller thing. And they'll say that song really meant this to me because a memory I had with my dad or something I was going through with my boyfriend or my girlfriend or whatever. And like, you know, like, that's why it's like, they're all, they all have the potential to be special. It's really about like, like, you know, in the eye of the beholder, do you know what I mean? It's really sort of yeah. about like what it means to other people. That's the most meaningful thing to us. Oh, cool. Um, so you also uh, written songs for the movies La La Land Lyle, Lyle, Crocodile, and Spirited, and all three of those are very different storylines. Um, how do you get in each character's head? That's a great question. I think what we like to do, because we went to school um, and we studied acting, and that was how we learned how to first get into the world of musicals, we really like to just pretend to be characters. So it sounds really silly, but what we really love to do is just act out like how a character would act and try to get into the body and the voice um, and just play pretend, you know, like play is such an underrated um, tool that you can use as, as someone who's creative, right? It's just, what does it feel like to play around? And, um, and so we'll talk in the voices of the characters or we'll put on accents or we'll you know, improvise together and, and have a back and forth conversation. And, you know, that's the way that we tend to get into character initially. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. When uh, I just, I love all of those movies and I, when Spirited came out, I was like, I just had the soundtrack constantly on the loop. Um, and so, yeah. And that's so nice. Oh, you. <laughs> Do you have any songs you like the most from that from that um, album, Maya? Oh, I love them all, but I really like um, "Do a Little Good." 
Oh, oh that's cool. Yeah, we like that song too. We're we're proud of that song and and we like the the message of it too, which is sort of like, you know, people think that it's so, sort of like you're either really good or really bad and sort of like how the, the reality of most of our day-to-day life is like we're just trying to do a little bit of good, try to do a little better than we did yesterday, one yeah. step at a time, even if it's two steps forward, one step back. How can we make even just small little differences in the world, small impact? that then ripples out. So um, that means a lot to us. So now that because that just became our favorite song from Spirited because you loved it so much, you know? <laughs> um, so I, uh, uh, I know that um, you wrote this song, uh, Running Home to You from the musical episode of The Flash and the Flash is one of my all-time favorite shows, and um, I just uh, recently interviewed Grant Gustin. Um, <laughs> uh, and so I was, uh, and the musical episode is just like one of my all-time favorite episodes from the show. Um, and so I was wondering how that opportunity came about. Oh, you know, it's funny. I think there's two different paths. One is that the man who um, helps to run the show is a guy named Greg Berlanti. And he and we always wanted to try to find something together. And so that was really, really fun to finally get to work on something like that. But a- another path is that we actually met Grant when he was 18 years old, when he was at Elon Um university and we went down there because i think they were doing um a production of our first show ever called edges and we went down there to meet some of the students and talk with them like we're talking with you now and uh we we got to meet grant so the idea that we got to be a part of um the musical episode of a show that grant was in and that greg was doing and that one of our friends from college darren chris was also in was so fun because it was all of our friends getting together to create a big musical together and it was really really great oh that's so cool yeah i also i also love darren chris so that who doesn't uh, right who doesn't yeah Yeah. he is great we have we have a producer that we work with who loves him too especially so loves cool he's a great have you talked to him have you interviewed? I haven't. Well, when's it happening? <laughs> I would love for it to happen. <laughs> Let's make it happen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I actually uh, over in when quarantine happened in 2020, I actually I rewatched all of the flash and the musical episode was the one like i constantly had on repeat when i was going through radiation um so i was constantly listening to the music and watching it so oh i'm so glad that that could could be helpful to you during such a crazy time in your life yeah so thank you thank you for sharing it um so who are your biggest musical inspirations or influences Ooh, this is a tough one because there's so many kind of it's such a range of folks because like we are um we are big musical theater kids right so we what we met at musical theater school so we we love like classic musicals like rogers and hammerstein and frank lesser who wrote guys and dolls um and sondheim of course right um and leonard bernstein and you know west side story and all all those great musicals of the golden age we are big big fans of we also love like popular like sort of like the american songbook and popular music of the last 40 years so Think about Stevie Wonder, Carol King, um, who else? A uh, Billy Joel. Um, I, I could probably think of a lot of. You know, I, I love. I love like Sting. We also love a lot of pop music, by the way. We also love, like. We try we to love listen. Taylor's. To we love Taylor's. Taylor Swift. We love a Taylor Swift moment. 
Um, yeah. no, we really like we're, we're obsessed with Lizzo. You know what I mean? Like we really love it all, and we try to we try to sort of keep up with everything because we never know what kind of project we're going to take on next. As you noted, like Spirited and, and Lila Crocodile and other stuff, it's all so different. And we love to get to bounce around in different styles and palettes and stuff. So we are just big fans of music, which sounds kind of corny, I know to say, but it's just the truth. We love music and love to immerse ourselves in all different kinds of music. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so what is your all time favorite music call? Um, I really love uh I, I'll 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 say mine, and I think I know Justin's too. My um, one of my favorites is "Merrily We Roll Along," which is by Stephen Sondheim. And there's a recent production off Broadway that's going to go to Broadway that stars Lindsay Mendez, who we worked together on a show called Dogfight. She was just in it, and then Daniel Radcliffe, who played Harry Potter in the Harry Potter movies, and uh, Jonathan Groff, who's another big Broadway star. And I just also love the voice, and also the voice of Kristoff. Oh, the voice of Kristoff in Frozen too. Um, and I just really love that musical, and it it's a really good one for me. Oh, cool. And I mean, I I I I have two different types of ones that I go to. I go to Sweeney Todd, which is actually coming back to Broadway right now, which is like a very sort of Sondheim um, dark, um, brilliantly written, but sort of very. Um, um dark <laughs> show but i also love like guys and dolls you know what i mean the music man i would go with guys and dolls though classic musical incredible numbers um just big fun um you know golden age musical yeah cool yeah um yeah i uh um i always love yeah why um well, so I like I always loved Broadway, but it wasn't until 2020 when lockdown happened that I really got like obsessed with soundtracks. Um, and so I am obsessed with uh, I love Spring Awakening. Yeah, um, so good, right? So good. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so just when when you mentioned Jonathan Groff, that like my mind first went to Spring Awakening. Um, so and, good. yeah, yeah, and then obviously I love Dear Evan Hansen and Hamilton and Rent and First Date and yeah, I'm just going through all the no, ones. You know them all. You know these are great <laughs> ones. These are awesome ones. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, I have a whole uh, soundtrack on Spotify of just my favorite Broadway soundtracks. I and love I, that. <laughs> and uh, when during lockdown i drove my family a little bit crazy because it was <laughs> like only broadway soundtracks pretty much like 24 <laughs> 7. so <laughs> I love we, we, we wouldn't have it any other way Maya. so we're we're, yeah. we're 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 a thousand percent supporters of that <laughs> thank you yeah um so my uh, last question for you is who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? Ooh, that's a good one. Well, I will say after meeting you for 20 minutes, I feel like you're one of them. So that's true. Um, and I think that it takes yeah. such bra such bravery and not only bravery, but also like it takes an incredible kind of person to go through what you are going through and then also turn it into art. Right. And that is what people who do what we do try to do every day. And you're doing it 291 episodes later, you're taking something that's really hard and you're actually making it into something beautiful that you can share with other people to remind them that they're not alone, which is the whole purpose of why we all do what we do in the first place. So it's just really cool to meet a superhero like you who's, who's, you know, metaphorically flying and um, letting us be a part of the ride. Thank you. I don't think we need to talk about any other superheroes now that we've <laughs> talked about my, I mean, that's, that's really, really it. 
you're <laughs> you you are and and the folks listening in on this and the folks that are also there with you all and helping out and and the healthcare workers and all of that though you, you all are heroes to us well thank you so much that like you that just I can't even like speak right now. That just means the world to me. So thank you so much. And you, it's so cool you. that you honestly, what you're doing is like what every artist hopes to do. So it's just, it's really inspiring to us. Thank you. And thank you so much for calling in. I've just been so excited to talk with you guys. I know I already said it, but you're, work has just like means so much to me and has helped me through so much so thank you thank you that means so much to us like more than you'll ever 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 know so thank you Maya thank you Binge and Justin, thank you. thank you so much for spending so much time with us. Uh, thank you for inspiring not just Maya, but uh, so many kids I know we would get requests for this is uh, uh, me and hey. rewrite the stars constantly when that movie came out so uh thank you for that and uh i know maya will keep us updated on all your upcoming projects and where to see you and see your work next thank you thank you for having us this meant so much everybody take care thank you bye bye bye, -bye. bye. 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 bye.